gonna plow the soil, get the ground ready for the next crop. When I was younger, about 10 or 11, my dad put me on a tractor. He always told me to make straight lines, but one time I made a baseball field pretty much. This machine right here, probably two, three hundred thousand dollars pretty easily, I think. Hey, welcome to Experts Play. My name is farmer Kenny Tanaka from Tanaka Farms in Irvine, and I'm ready to play Farming Simulator 22. All right, let's go play. It looks like a large farm. I always wanted a barn like this. Go see if the tractors are in there. Oh, there's a tractor over here. All right, here we go, we're driving. It's headed towards that blue mark. That's probably not right. All right. Let's go back to the farm. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty easy to drive. The steering wheel on tractors are usually pretty sensitive. It's nice being inside the cab. It feels nice and warm in here. Looks like there's about three fields there. Let's go find the other tractor to try to harvest some of this wheat. Uh-oh. Oh, this is like real life, trying to read all the manuals, trying to figure out how to, the implements work. Uh, we have about 15 field workers. All our picking is done by hand. Usually only pick about 20 boxes at a time, if that. So it'd be nice to pick something in large quantity with a big tractor like this. It'd make it a little bit easier, less manpower. Biggest expenses on the farm is labor. We've never grown wheat like this before. We only have about 30 acres. This is a lot of flat ground too. A lot of our ground is on the side of the hill, little rougher terrain. Now we're gonna plow the soil, get the ground ready for the next crop, loosen up the ground, try to plow under some of that old wheat that, that was there. So the ground, the soil looks nice and dark. Usually that means it has a lot of compost in it. Ground is ready to be planted. And our field is really clay-like, has a lot of clods in the ground, so we have to work the ground a little bit more. Usually sandy soil is a lot better to farm in. Usually we only do a couple rows at a time, we'll grow two rows of carrots, two rows of cabbage, things like that. So we grow a couple rows at a time. We don't do whole big blocks all like this at, at all at one time when we're farming. Southern California, the weather's always nice, but there are still some seasons. Strawberry season for us is March through June. We'll plant in October, plant pumpkins around June, and hopefully they're ready by October. All right, now we're in a Massey Ferguson. We do have one big tractor, but it's our Massey's not running right now. It's usually the hardest things is getting the hydraulics attached. This implement would be easy. It's called a three-point hitch. They attach with three places, so it's adjustable. These don't have any hydraulics hooked up to them, so it's fairly easy. All right, let's try the pickup somewhere. We have a 1982 truck, I think. When I was younger, it was fun just driving around the tractors like this. <laughs> so a lot of farming is planning, trying to figure out what to grow where, when to grow it. This is kind of like that. <laughs> this is the planting schedule. We grow corn, sunflowers, soybeans, sugar cane. Birds are a big problem on the farm right now. We have to try to cover all the strawberries. We tried falconers, we tried sound machines to keep them away. They just keep eating the strawberries and all of our crops. Maybe we can take a rest now. We're not tired yet. This is like the trucks I learned to drive in when I was really young. I ran through a couple fields. My dad wasn't too happy about that. And we wouldn't normally drive through a field like this, especially when we haven't even picked up the product that we're gonna harvest. We use the hydraulics to lower, or the three-point hitch to lower the, the cultivator. Probably wouldn't run over the ground we just cultivated. We, we'd compact the ground, the water wouldn't run right. We usually cultivate maybe twice a year. We try to reuse the same beds a couple times. We make beds, put plastic, and then we plant, hand plant uh, produce into, or the seeds into the ground. And then once it's picked, we'll reuse the same holes and plant again, just to save on plastic and save on making the beds, save on, save on time. And the strawberries were growing in a little differently. Now we're growing above ground instead of in the ground like this. Pretty much uh, we're using the rain gutters. It's a type of rain gutter trough. So we're actually not working the ground too much anymore like this. Aquaponic systems had so much problems with the ground, diseases in the ground, uh, so we could change out the soil. Uh, we use compost or we're also using uh, coware. It's a uh, light, just coconut husks, just a medium to hold the, the roots in the place. And we also, uh, we're layering them so we get about three times more production out of the same ground. Uh, we only have about 30 acres of farmland, so 
We have to make the use of all the ground we have, especially when kids come out and pick their own strawberries. They don't pick all of it all at once. A lot of strawberries do go bad, so we have to have more, more production out of our plants. If we could, we probably sh we would grow more strawberries to sell to stores. Strawberries is a great crop because it'll keep on producing for about four or five months span time span. All right, let's finish harvesting this field of the wheat. I think it's a high value crop, so we probably would if we weren't farming in California. Wheat, once you chop it down, you gotta regrow it. But we also replant strawberries every year. If you leave the strawberry plants in the ground year after year, we only get about half production in the next year if you keep that same plant in the ground. So we try to replant every year to get a full, a full production out of each plant. Probably some of the hardest crops are, the root crops are hard just because it's constant replanting. They're most of the carrots, radishes, things like that. They'll grow pretty quickly. Radishes, they could grow within 45 days if it's hot. Carrots a little bit longer, 60 to 90 days. The ground is really hard. Clay sticks to the carrots, so you have to break up the ground. Wash, we have to wash the carrots after we pick them. Almost have to rub each carrot because there's so much mud, mud on the carrots when we pick. For larger farms like this, when if they were to grow carrots, they'd have a machine that would pick, pick the carrots all at once. They'd probably have a plant that would wash all the carrots, prep it, cut the tops off but we do everything by hand. A lot of these new machines, the new tractors are so high tech. Uh, when you're leveling and prepping the ground, they have a GPS that will make sure the ground's level. It'll pretty much run the tractor, uh, pretty much run the tractor for you. It'd be fun driving around a big farm like this. Kind of cool, you can see the different stages. The one on the left just starting to grow, the one on the right is ready to be picked. These machines, the tractors we buy are used probably in the 1970s, 1980s, they're probably $15,000, $20,000. This machine right here, well, I'm guessing probably two, three hundred thousand dollars pretty easily, I think. That's why we don't have any new new tractors and machinery costs way too much. Probably this, this Massey Ferguson right here is probably a probably hundred thousand dollars, hundred twenty thousand dollars new. These are the fields you see when you're flying in the airplane, looking down, you see that just the squares, squares of farmland. It's amazing how they farm three, four hundred acres at a time. Okay, let's finish cultivating this field. <laughs> Yeah, my dad always wanted a big John Deere tractor like this. We had one, but it broke down and we never could salvage fixing it, so we sold it. When uh, Tanaka Farms was at, was at its height of, I guess, farmland, we were farming about 200, I think two to 300 acres, basically just wholesaling and shipping across the country. And that's when my dad was farming and kind of just growing, uh, he was probably like mid 20s, kind of took over the farm from my grandfather. Pretty much lost everything. Had a couple of bad years. Uh, Mexico started importing a lot of tomatoes and strawberries. Almost put our farm out of business. Had to sell everything off. And I was kind of too young to know it, but a million dollars in debt at 25% interest. And uh, yeah, farming like this was no longer an option. So we had to downsize. Yeah, started doing these tours, just selling our roadside stands. Farm work like this, uh, when I was younger, about 10 or 11, my dad put me on a tractor when we did have good amount of land. He always told me to make straight lines, but one time I made a baseball field pretty much. I was going crooked and just making rounded turns. And yeah, he was kind of mad about that. <laughs> After that, he taught me how to make straight lines. Look at all those crows eating all the wheat. We have this big of a field, use uh, farm trucks to go see what everybody's doing. On our field, we use golf carts now. Before the golf carts, I don't know how we got around the whole field. Spend a lot of time guys walking around. Sometimes it takes more time for the guys that just walk around to the other jobs than it is to do the job that they're supposed to be doing. See, if you don't have a good plan, you end up wandering around, not knowing where to go next. So that when the guys, we'd be out in the far fields, they'd bring the uh, food trucks out to the farm the old school food trucks. They drive around, they know where all the farms are, so they'd stop there. I used to have to get something every time it came around when I was little. So it was fun driving around the tractors, plow the field and uh, get things grown. For more experts play, visit Gameology on Facebook and YouTube. If you wanna check out our real farm, check out tanakafarms.com. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks and see you next time. I say farmer simulator. Farming simulator 22. Welcome to experts. Yeah, she's.